Romans 10, 9. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God rose Jesus from the dead, you'll be saved. So I started thinking, uh, it's, I started burning in here like I did the day I had a visitation. And I, he, I wrote all these things down. I took them home out of our Dewey Bible, wiped all the dust off, opened it up, and it's, it was even in better English. And I, I want to praise God for 47 years I've been studying the Bible, and I found out it's real. And we say a lot of churches up on the reservation and in Mexico and in the Philippines say, the Bible is God speaking to me. And, and that's our logo. That's, that's what we believe. And then we add Proverbs 4.22. We say this every Sunday morning. They are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. And then we pinch ourselves to make sure we know. See, because I am saved in here. Okay, this is already in eternity. I am being saved. My soul, that's where most people are confused. The spirit and soul are different. Amen? When you got born again, you still had the same bad thoughts. What are we working on tonight? To come out on a Friday night, you've got to be a disciple. You're not a believer, you're a disciple. And so, what are we doing tonight? We're working out, we're pushing out this guy up here that's enmity or hatred towards God, and we're pushing in. And the Bible says that we press. There's a pressing that takes place. Press. Forget, forgetting those things which are past. We press towards the prize of the upward calling in Christ. Amen. And, and when I'm out on the road, I remember coming up here in 91 or whatever it was, and I taught on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. God has blessed us with that gift of believing that every born again believer can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. That is available to every born again believer. And when you speak in tongues, you cannot interpret it. The Bible says that word tongues, it means a language you cannot acquire. You can't learn this language. Now there is diversities of tongues which is a different tongue. I can tell when I have diversities of tongues. It has a different anointing. It sounds different. That's when you pray to interpret. But the Bible says, when you speak in an unknown tongue, no one understands it. You speak mysteries to God. So if no one understands it, how can you interpret it? But what happens? It starts pushing your stinking thinking out. Because praying in the Holy Ghost builds up your most holy faith. We need some holy faith. Because without faith it is impossible to place Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is. And He is the rewarder to those who diligently seek Him. We just quoted Hebrews 11, 1 and 6. And I want to show you, I'm going to start out in, in the Old Testament. I want to show you. What, why Paul said this in Isaiah 28. I hope you have your swords with you. How many of you know the Bible is the sword? It's the, it's the word of God. The shield. Taking the shield of faith. What is the shield? The shield is Jesus Christ. And I, and I want to tell you why we fall. Why did, why did Peter fall when he walked on the water? Because he looked at the trials. He looked at the temptation. And Pastor Tom, my, uh, my daughter, said to me re recently, uh, Papa, they call me whatever the, the daughter calls me, Papa, what's God showing you for this upcoming year? This was Jan uh, January 1st. And I says, it just came out of my mouth, be ready. Amen. Well, we could go with that one. Be ready for what? Did you get ready for church tonight? Mm -hmm. Or was it a pain to get here? On Sunday morning, do you get ready for church? Oh, i got to go to church. Tom expects me to be there. <laughs> See, I'm telling you, we, we prepare ourselves before we preach. We prepare ourselves. We, we get ready. What happens if we get killed on the way home? 
Come on, there's going to be drugs out everywhere tonight. What happens? Are you ready to receive that? Are you ready to have surgery on your back? Are you ready to go in and see Pastor Tom? The doctor said he was dead, basically dead. I thought he was too. And now he's still up here playing the guitar? Amen. Come on, let's give God the glory. <laughs> and I had to really, before I go into a room, a hospital room, because I don't know about you, Pastor, but I've seen so many people walk in and say, Oh my God, you look awful. <laughs> no, you prepare yourself. You walk in, Hey Tom, how you doing? Don't I? Because we're going to pray the prayer of faith whether I like it or not. Amen. Amen. Doesn't matter what I think, doesn't matter what I feel. What does the Word of God say? That's all I believe in. What does the Word of God say? Don't believe any pastor, don't believe anybody. You find out for yourself what does the Bible say. Just because I said it doesn't make it true. You have to prove it. Boy, that makes pastors mad when I tell them, yeah, get test challenged. I had a guy, I learned this. Pastor Al, where's that scripture? <laughs> Come on, pastors, we really need to get, start getting checked. So here we are in Isaiah 20, verse 11. Notice what it says. For, uh, for with stammering lips. If you don't know what stammering lips is, I'll show you. A lot of people get the baptism of the Holy Spirit that way. It's stammering. I believe a lot of kids, I just saw, uh, it was on the video, a young baby, I don't know how old, in its mother's arms, praying over its mother with a little Bible in her hand, praying in tongues. <coughs> I remember we had about a one and a half year old that used to pray over people with us, and she'd lay hands on them praying in tongues. If a child can do it, you can do it. If you become like a child, you're going to receive tonight. But if you're full of religion tonight, you're not going to like what I say. Because the doctrines of men have destroyed the Word of God. I want truth. See, the truth is going to make us. The word set we shouldn't use. It's a making. He's the potter, we're the clay. He's working on us tonight. He's getting rid of the garbage tonight. So we can be free. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Freely you have received, freely give. How can you give away something you don't already have? How can you operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit if you don't even have Him upon you? Come on. So he says, with stammering lips and another tongue, He will speak to this people to whom He said, This is the rest which you have rest, caused the weary to rest. When you, when you speak in tongues, in 1 Corinthians 14, it says, it builds you up, it edifies you. In Jude 20, it says, praying in the Holy Spirit, building up your most holy faith. And people that think it's of the devil, they're knocking Jesus, because Jesus said one of the signs that's going to follow us as a believer is we're going to cast out demons, we're going to speak with a language we do not understand. And come on, that's real. And he says, and this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. Come on, how many people, uh, they're told when they got born again, they received it all. How come the Bible doesn't know that? The Bible doesn't even know that. Five times in the book of Acts where it, where it was received, two times it was received without the laying on of hands. Three times it was received with the laying on of hands. And so it, it could come one way or another. I remember the first camp meeting I did with uh, evangelist, I believe he's a Kenneth Begishi now. He's an evangelist. I, I don't think he's pastoring now, but he's, he's part of our organization. Praise the Lord. And uh, I remember that night, I mean, there were so many people at this camp meeting, and it was incredible. I can tell you what it was, because that's when it was the hottest time ever in Phoenix, and we were in cool country. <laughs> I know that. It was in 92, I believe it was, or 93. And all the, a lot of these people we prayed for did not 
speak in tongues. They did not get it. A lot of them did. A lot of them didn't. He calls me Monday. He says, we, we baptize these people in, in, in Powell. Is it Lake Powell? Yeah. Lake Powell. He says, when they came up out of the water, every one of them spoke in tongues. <laughs> My father was 65 years old. That said we were all going to hell when I baptized my mother under the water a year before. I baptized him a year later underwater at 65 years old. He comes out of the water speaking in tongues and kissed me for the first time and told me he loved me. 65 years old before he found out what love was. If you don't have Christ, how can you love anybody? Right. These people that call themselves born again and they're prejudiced, they're not born again. We're all part of a hut, two people, Adam and Eve. It all started with two people. We're killing one another. We're killing our own brothers and sisters. That's how stupid humans are. That's why he calls us sheep, the dumbest animal on earth. And you know a sheep, it takes a dog or a goat to bring them home. Every night. Do you know a sheep is the only one, if, I, if I'm wrong, tell me, they're the only ones that can't find their way home. Doesn't that sound like Christians? <laughs> is that right? Yeah, that's right. See, that young man over there just confirmed it. So, so that's why we've got to be so careful as sheep will believe any dog or any goat. Instead of saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, where is that in the scripture? Teaching you something tonight. Amen. <clears throat> go over to Go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And I, I want to read what Paul just said. Remember, he just said, I'll read it again. For stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Yet they won't believe it. In chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians, chapter 14. 14 or 1 Corinthians. In the law it is written, verse 21, with men of other tongues and other lips I will speak to this people, yet for all that they will not hear. They're still not hearing today. I heard one minister say, I asked for it, nothing happened, so it can't be true. I, I was in Tijuana, Mexico. And we were in a big movie theater ministering. And I don't know how many people, there were so many people that received the baptism of the Holy Spirit that day. And it was amazing because I'm sitting like where you are, Benny. And the Lord spoke to me and said, uh, when you pray for the baptism today, I don't want you to call them to the altar. I want them to stay seated. And I says, Lord, I'm in Mexico. These people get excited. They, they, I mean, they really get excited. Uh, they like it when they come to the altar. He said, he says, read Acts 2. And so, here I am. They're calling me up to the front. I'm going to read it in Acts 2. You know, but I, I thought I better obey. And guess what it says? All 120 received. How many? What is all? I looked it up. Guess what all means? All. All. How many? All. All. All 120 <laughs> The 120 is the number for death. Okay? I believe when you give baptism of the Holy Spirit, the power isn't for you to do jumping jacks. The power isn't for you to speak louder than anybody else. The power is so you can die to yourself and let Christ come forth in all His glory. The church is ready to explode. God is ready to move because He's done it all. He said it's finished. He's waiting for the church to wake up and do what we've been called to do. Amen. I'm talking to me right now. <laughs> Amen. And so I had so many people come up to me after that through an interpreter because they're all speaking Spanish. And every one of them said, nobody ever told us we had to open up our mouth and speak. It says, and they heard them speak. Because everybody thinks it's the Holy Spirit speaking. The Holy Spirit can't speak until you speak. Come on! I, I better read it. You're looking at me confused. Go to Acts 2. 
Acts 2. And I believe, and, and, and it's no use arguing about it, I already believe it, that they were already saved because Jesus blew the Holy Spirit upon them. And so here are these 120, and this is what's always bothered me. 500 plus people saw Jesus Christ alive. Okay, can you imagine? In a short period of time, in 50 days, we lost, the, now we've gone from 500 to 120. Think about that. The falling away. Supposedly, 80% of people that get saved go back to the world. You know why? They don't get discipled. We were never called to make converts. We were called to make disciples. And let me tell you what a problem is in the church today. Are we just licensed? You're going to love this. A couple from Africa. <laughs> I mean, our, our little church. The stuff we do is so incredible. And he says, I've been in the United States for four years. So let me tell you what the problem is with young people. The churches think they need to entertain them. You know what? They get too much entertainment as it is. They need to be taught the Word of God. You guys, I'm telling you, you need to learn how to word, use the Word. We're under such a demonic, a damn, a damn, a pew, demonic, there it is, attack. And most believers don't know how to fight. Peter didn't know how to fight. He let that wave knock him out and push him down under the water. And what was the first thing he says? Save me, Lord. What did the Lord say? This is amazing. The Lord doesn't chew out the ones in the boat. You of little faith. I don't want him saying that to me. But even with your little faith, he still picked him up out of the water. Amen? In Acts 2, here they are. They're up. They're, remember, Peter, he can't do anything right. He's, he takes out his sword. And, and I know how to use a, a, a samurai sword. And he takes out his sword and he just cuts this guy's ear off. Now come on, Clock! he could have cut his, he could have just taken the head right off. But he didn't know how to use the sword even. He did everything wrong. I'm going to, I'll never leave you Lord, I'll be there to the death. The Lord says you're going to, you're going to turn against me three times. They're going to say you don't know me. And here he is doing everything wrong until he gets the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And what really got me, can you imagine if the Lord would have had to pick up a head and put it on somebody? Come on, wouldn't that have been a greater miracle? He couldn't even do that right. See, God wants to amaze us. We limit him. Elder Pete, I can talk about things that we've seen out in the road as places what God, where God has done. And we know what God can do because we've seen it. You know, in Tijuana, we, we even had a heart, a brand new heart put in a person's body. And I'm telling you, we, I could tell you story after story after story about what God can do. But there's so few of those stories compared to the people we've, we've touched in Jesus' name. Amen. And the Bible, I, I just, last May 30th, I had surgery, major surgery on my back. And I can't blame the devil. I can't blame my faith. It was, I was in martial arts all my life, and that's pretty hard on your body. And when I got older, I still didn't give it up. I still, you know, and so I can't blame the devil. It's my fault for a lot of my problems. But it doesn't slow me down. It doesn't stop me. And as long as I can do what I got to do. But I knew I had to go through this mountain. See, all of us are going to have trials. All of us are going to have temptations. And I want to tell you something. The Lord gave me one word. He said, in me, you might have peace. Isn't that amazing? He didn't say you were going to have peace. In me, you might have peace. In the world, you shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. Got that? My daughter and wife was wondering what was wrong with me. I'm there at 5 o'clock in the morning, I believe it was, getting ready. I couldn't wait to go into surgery. Man, I was so... And Amy says, 
are, are you all right? Aren't you nervous? No, I'm excited. I had the peace of God. I went in, I told the nurse and I told all those guys, man, this is a great thing. Don't worry if you hear, you feel your hands moving. Jesus is going to be there to help you. <laughs> and I just went, to, I, I mean, it was unbelievable. I had no pain. Uh, I mean, I had pain, tremendous pain. Don't, don't get me wrong. And the next morning, the nurse says, I need to talk to you too. Just like that, I thought, oh God, <laughs> you know, right away I lost all my faith. <laughs> anyway, she gets saved. <laughs> And here I am, I can't even get out of bed. And she gets saved. You never know when God's going to use you if you just be open. But you need the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So here they are, they're up in the room shaking. <laughs> they're hiding up there. And they're even choosing another apostle. And Because the Lord says, if I don't go, the Comforter cannot come. Come on. They, he's called the Comforter. He's called the, the Holy Spirit. And when he talks about it's capitalized. He's part of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we baptize in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit by the authority given to us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We baptize you. Watch this, the name of the Father. There's a time I need discipline. I need Father God to deal with me. But there's a time, oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. I need a friend sometimes. But there's times, like when I come out of surgery, I needed some comfort. And that's called the Holy Spirit. He's going to stand alongside of us. And when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes up upon you. Now that, remember, these people are already saved. They've already seen Jesus. Remember, if unless a man is born again, he cannot see. He can, that, that's the Greek word for understand. How on earth, that's why people are bored in church, is because they don't have the living Christ in them. They don't have the teacher. So why would they like church? Oh, my parents make me go to church. We ought to thank them. You know, when I was growing up, I never was asked, do you want to go to church? I, I couldn't wait to get there. I remember when I was an altar boy, I wanted the six, six o'clock mass. Because I, I just waited for that, because I, it was, I was, there was a mystery about communion, and I wanted to see God. And I was so discouraged when he turned it around, and you just watched him do it. Nothing happened. Because it's, it's not in the natural, it's all in the Spirit. Notice, stay here, in, in John chapter 6 and verse 63, guess what Jesus said? The Spirit gives life. The flesh profiteth, what? Nothing. Nothing. The words that I speak, they are what? Spirit and they are life. You're not going to understand. How can anybody write the book of Revelation, an interpretation, if he doesn't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit? This book is written by the Spirit of the living God through man. Amen? And so now, watch this now. So here they are at the day of Pentecost. Pentecost represents 50. And remember, 50 is still half a hundred. Come on, there's some 30 that's born again. Some 60 baptized in the Holy Spirit. Some 100. That's walking fully as Christ would walk. I believe those are the sons of God in the last days. When the day of Pentecost was fully had come, they, notice they, all of them, were all with one accord. There's the key. If we could get in one accord tonight and forget about ourselves. Just forget about your problems. See, we're, we come to the Lord with our problems. We ought to come to the Lord and you show, it says, in me you might have peace. In the world you, you shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. Notice the Lord's prayer starts out with praise and worship. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. See, we come, oh God, Lord, I'm giving up going through this. What am I going to do? Like a bunch of brats. Instead of saying, you know what, Father? I'm a mess right now and I'm just going to praise you. I need your help. 
I come to you, Father, in Jesus' name. Because you're the only answer. Man has no, you can't trust man. They don't have any answers. Only God has the answer. And if I don't have the Holy Spirit, you shouldn't be here tonight. Amen. But your pastor knows, and Ella knows me quite well. And we've got to watch who's preaching in our pulpits. Amen. So, and they were all together. They were in unity. The unity brings the presence of God that brings the anointing, that brings the, 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 the let me see, the unity brings the anointing that brings the presence, and then God commands a blessing. That's in Psalm 133. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Isn't that amazing? I didn't know that at that time. I was so new at this, but God was using me. I just dared to believe it. And just when you get out of religion, you can't believe it, the freedom you have. All of us still have some religion in us. And remember, the doctrines of man make the word of God of none effect. Okay, so we've got to be careful. And you can't build a doctrine on one scripture. And you have to have at least two or three scriptures to prove the Bible. And there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each one of them. Okay, now think about this now. Uh, you can't see it, but there's a tongue of fire on me right now. Well, I don't see it, so you already lost it. <laughs> and in a moment, I'm going to show you that you have, when you ask for the Holy Spirit in, in Luke chapter 11, it says that if you ask for the Holy Spirit, He'll give Him to you. Isn't it amazing? Jesus said to ask for the Holy Spirit. What do you think of that, Benny? When you get saved, you didn't say, Oh, Holy Spirit, come into me. How do you get saved? You said, Here he is. I'm kneeling in the confessional booth all by myself. He was talking to somebody else. But my mother told me if I asked the Lord to come into my heart, he would. So I said something like this. I can't remember exactly. I was nine and a half years old. Lord Jesus, my mother said, if I asked you to come into my heart, you would. Would you come into my heart? He did. That's it. I didn't know I was saved until I was 30 years old. That's all I did. And everyone, there was eight of us, every one of my family, because four of us just recently died in the last four years of loss, four brothers. Every one of them would say, don't worry about him, he's different. How would you like to have that problem? They didn't want me around because they told the truth. <laughs> Bless you. And so, I didn't know until I'm 30 years old what I had in me. I found out, what is a Christian? A Christian is not a religious person. He has a, a relationship with Jesus Christ. I don't have to look for God. I'm not waiting for Him to come back. He can't come back without me. Come on, what if you, you rapture people. What if He doesn't come back? What if He doesn't take you seven years before? Are you going to have a heart attack over it? Is this man's heart are going to fail them? What if he doesn't come back? What if it's in three and a half years he doesn't come back? What if he waits to the end, like the Bible teaches? Are you ready? Come on. He says he doesn't come back until the harvest. See, we've got to be careful what we're hearing and what we're listening. We've got to start listening. What are you saying, Lord? Be, be, be still and know that I'm God. Do you realize how many people are sick today because they're, of their nerves? They're worried? What, can worry add an inch to your height? No. And we speak worries out, coming out. How am I going to pay the bills? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? Why don't you say, Lord, how are we going to do it? Yeah, come on. Let's, let's become a team, Lord. And they went out and they preached the word everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. See, he's going to confirm the word tonight with signs following. Why isn't that happening in our churches? Because we're not preaching the word. We want to, oh, we don't want to offend anybody. We have to preach the word. Pastor, this is all I keep hearing. Stay out of politics, Al. Stay out of this. Good point. 
preach the word. That's hard for humans to do, not to gossip. I know all of you can hold that back, but I can't. I have a problem. I like to point the finger. I know none of you do that, but I do, so I'm not blaming you. It's wrong. I know. All I hear is, when I get off the subject, Al, preach the word. Yes, Father. Hallelujah. And suddenly there came a sound. Woo! He likes noise. You know, we're supposed to be a noisy people. You notice I'm loud? <laughs> you quiet people, I'm going to knock your eardrums off. You know, there's a, one of those words for sound is like breaking of the music, how it breaks through. You know, I can't take, uh, you young people, your ears are different than ours. I mean, uh, like I love these, dr that drum set, isn't that fantastic? Mm. It, yeah, it's not bang, bang. <laughs> that was so nice tonight. Thank you. There appeared to, to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak. Who began? 120 people. What did they do? And it started coming out. And 17 different dialects understood what they said. Come on. That, we were in Tijuana, 17 of us went, that when Pastor Pina then and Nick. And uh, this lady was demon possessed and I just put my hand on her and I said, come on. And don't kid him, she raised up like this and went backwards and it like flying through the air and knocked down two rows of people. Could have been three rows, I don't know. And the Lord told Pina, she was from in India, a Hindu that became a, a spirit-filled Christian and became a pastor. And she, the Lord said, go down and, and, and minister to her in the Spirit. So she goes down and talks to her in the Spirit and comes back up front. Well, this lady comes up and starts talking to Pina in Spanish. And Pina doesn't know what she's saying, <laughs> you know. And so finally she gets an interpreter and, and the lady says, you just led me to the Lord in perfect Spanish. Why aren't you talking to me now? Was, did I do something wrong? We've got story after story about things like that. You know. Amen. It's so, it, it, their spirit, what did it say? They began to speak with other tongues, and the spirit gave them utterance. Notice, gave them utterance, that utterance. Now, they're, they're saying, well, you guys are all drunk. And, and notice what he says in verse 14. First of all, 17 different languages. We hear them speak in our own tongue the wonderful works of God. Now everybody remember that. The wonderful works of God. How can it be of the devil? Right. Come on, Pastor Herb. We've been accused of having people run out of our church because they found out we speak in tongues. They're demon possessed. Right. Come on. You know why? They're afraid of the signs. The Bible says they're afraid of the signs. And I, I, have a, I have a scripture now why people don't change. Well, I'm, I'm to this way because my mother's this way. I'm this way because my father was this way. Well, I got a new father. His name is Father God. And he wants me to be just like his son. Amen. Isn't that what the Word teaches? Well, guess what it says in the last part of Psalms 55, 19. It says they do not change because they do not fear God. Did you get it? So quit blaming your parents, quit blaming your bloodline, and get over it. Come on, you got to get over things, or you're never going to be running that race. You're going to run the race. How many of you have ever been in sports? Okay, did you have to do something? Right now, let's just say you were a runner. Okay, we're going to run 10 miles tomorrow. How, how many of us could do it? One person. Two people. Three. But you were trained, right? We couldn't do it. Well, we're sp that's the same energy you're putting in running, you need to put in the Lord. Amen. Come on. Come on. We're supposed to be praying all the time. How do you do that? Thank you, Lord. Lord, I'm just so happy to be here tonight. Man, we found the church when we went to uh, pastors. <laughs> I'm terrible with names. I know who you are. Anyway, 
<laughs> it's there. I know she's Jim Cheryl. That's it. We couldn't find a church. We ended up up north. I think we were almost in Utah. So. And, and we had to call for information. And she took, she led us right to the church, gave us the number there. And so we need each other. Amen. See, if you're a person that likes to be alone, the Bible basically calls you a fool. It says if two or three of us should agree. If when we come into unity, when we learn how to come to church, I'm telling you, when we learn how to get ready for church, we're going to see signs and wonders like you can't imagine. Amen. Come on. There's two reasons why we're not seeing the greater, greater works. One is, is it going to glorify Jesus Christ? Come on, it's what it says. And if you love me, keep my commandments. Well, I don't like the white, I don't love the white people. You're not going to have any miracles. I don't love the Navajos. You're not going to have any miracles. If you don't love your brother, it says you can't love God. I'm your brother. You're my sister and brother. We're family. We are the, a part of the biggest family there is. It's called the body of Christ. We're his wife. Glory to God. And it, it says in the book of Revelations, chapter 21, and she made her oh, 17, uh, 19, or 21, and one of those two, and she made herself ready. Prepared there means she was made ready. We have to be made ready. You ladies that you when you got married, I bet you y'all, some people lose, some ladies lose weight, they they get their hair done, you know. That's why they're always late for the the wedding. <laughs> Come on. The worst one I ever had was an hour and a half late. And I told them, you know, I don't have any lights out in the back of your place, and so you need to be here during daylight. And they showed up and they wanted me to preach some a message, and I says, I can't even read the book in front of me. This was the shortest wedding I think I ever had. Do you? Do you? Okay, you're done. <laughs> we need each other. But we got to prepare ourselves. This is okay. But how are we going to help others? Hurting people hurt people. Heal people heal people. Come on. How many of you need a smile once in a while? In a hug that you know it's real. Amen. It, so here he goes down. He says, the Others mocked them, saying they are full of wine. Verse 14. Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let, let it be known to you and heed my words, for these are not drunk as you suppose, sent. Since it is only the third hour of the day, which that means it's at nine o'clock in the morning. But this is that, I love the King James here, it says, this is that, or this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. It doesn't say anything in Joel about speaking in tongues, but this is what it says. And it should come to pass in the last day, says God, I will pour out my spirit on my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Okay, you sons and daughters, why aren't you prophesying? First Corinthians 14 says we can all prophesy. That's right. Guess what else it says, Benny? We all have a tongue. Mm -hmm. Come on! If you don't have a tongue tonight, we'll just have to pray for you. You have to do it. This they all received. Why? Because <laughs> they were here. They saw him. Unless a man is born again, he cannot understand what I'm saying tonight. This is fool the Bible says this is foolishness to a person that isn't saved. Think about this. You believe that some dude on the cross 2,000 years ago died and rose again, and you're going to live forever in glory. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Your natural mind can accept that. But man, he gave you the faith. He gave you the measure of faith so you could say... Lord, save me. You know, you don't even have to confess your sins. You don't even have to go to the confessional booth. Do you know that? Right. Whosoever shall call 
upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right. No confession. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God rose Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. What are we speaking? If you haven't changed, you're not born again. That's right. Or you're not reading the Word. Because how many of you know you plant a seed, it won't grow until you put water on it. Come on, this is the water of the Word. We're pouring water on you tonight. So stay awake. <laughs> And if I start going too late, somebody stop me. Because I'm like, Peter, if you fall dead, I mean, Paul, if you fall dead, we'll try to lift you up like he did. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Everybody's still here? So we know what we're supposed to be doing now. We're supposed to be prophesying. Your young men shall see visions. Now, this is why, this is my scripture why I can tell you I'm not old. Okay, you're looking at a 77 years old person that's not old. How do I know this? Watch this. Your old men shall dream dreams. I don't dream. I see visions. I bet you didn't know that one. Come on, I'm being renewed right now. I'm being renewed while some of you are falling apart. I'm getting fixed. Their life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. He wants us well. And if we're not well, He wants us to be able to reach people in the place we're at. And, all, and, and it goes down, but I want you to see what it says in verse 21. And it should come to pass that whoever calls on the, on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that word call there means to worship or to make a decision. Now, I have to preach, if I, if I had time tonight, I would preach to you about the baptism of the Holy Spirit at least four to six hours. That's how much there were, I've got in the Bible about it. But I can only preach for ten hours tonight, because I've got a service in the morning, so I have to preach. See, this is the laughter. See, laughter is medicine. I don't like being in a church where everybody stands like this. Come on, we're supposed to be joyful. Amen. We're supposed to be different than the world. Amen. I don't know if you've been out there lately, but they're not very nice. Especially when it comes to driving. Okay, go over to chapter 10. Let's start there. Let's start there. Here's Paul, I mean Peter, and he's going to, the, the Lord's asked him to come up the, to the reservation. Uh, the Native American uh, Navajos. Cheryl, I do know your name. I pray for you every night. I know that too. And your husband's name is Ken. And I love your family. Especially your older son. And I love his, his new wife. I had a wonderful time ministering to them. Did they say that? Yes, they did. Good. Praise God. I am so blessed, you guys. Just to be here tonight, I just got chills. <laughs> I'm so tired, I can't hardly stand up, but I'm chilling, man. <laughs> we're, 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 at that little church of ours, we, we keep so busy with all the ministries we're involved with. And you guys are so blessed having Pastor Robert as your director. Do you know, I pulled him out of a crowd, I think in 89 or 88. Our, and now he's the leader. I pulled our leader in Mexico, Hector, Pastor Hector DiPolito, pulled him out of a crowd in 1996. And God has put both of them in leadership. And they are the most incredible men. You know why they're incredible? They listen. You want to be incredible men? Learn how to listen. The biggest complaint I've ever heard from my wife and all the women and husbands I've counseled with, my wife will say to me, Al, how come you never listen to me? It, it, can I hear an amen from the women? Amen. Ladies, we need help. I'm serious. I pray about that subject constantly. Lord, doesn't the Bible say, He that hath an ear, 
let him hear. Do you know that's 25 times in the New Testament? You know what 25 represents? Salvation. So there's something about listening. It says in, in Psalm 81, if, if my people would just listen to me, I would heal them and destroy their enemies. If my people are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then we're going to hear from heaven and heal here of our land. Come on. We've got to get back to believing that this Bible is talking to me. I've got to listen to it. And so here's Peter now. He's arguing with the gods of the... Me, a Jew, going to go to talk to the Navajos? Why, they're uncircumcised. <laughs> see, he still didn't know. He still didn't get the... You see, Paul hadn't come around yet. He was still under law. You know, in the New Testament, circumcision doesn't mean anything. It's the circumcision of the heart. And I just got a new revelation. Remember when Moses, uh, his wife, the two sons, and threw the skins at him? Do you know when a man is circumcised, it never grows back? When you were born again, never lose it. Well, when you learn that, you've got something, baby. The devil can't take it away from you. Till you get that down, your life is pretty miserable. Amen. Oh God, did I say something wrong? I didn't pray enough. I didn't give enough money. Oh God, Lord, I'm about so bad. Yeah, you are. Get over it. The only good thing in you is him. This guy is a mess. Ask me, I'll tell you. I've been working on this guy for 47 years. He's a disaster. But in here he's real good. Come on, how many pastors would admit that one? I'm working out my salvation just like you are. Every day. And the more I study, I study every day. And every day I realize we don't know very much. This, we're going to be studying this through eternity. That's how important this Bible is. It's never changed. Do you realize all these other religions, all their stuff has been changed? The last time I studied it, uh, one religion changed 22,000 line times. Imagine 22,000 lines that changed it. One changed the Bible 459 times, and then the Lord showed me, we're not supposed to be studying other religions. We're not to study other gods. We don't even know our God. What are we doing studying their God? Oh, that I might know Him. Philippians 3.10. That I might know Him and the power of His resurrection. That's what some of you need tonight. You need the power of the resurrection so you can die to your addiction. So you can die to self and start living a life of Christ. You can't buy this with a pill. You can't buy this with liquor. You can't buy this smoke in it. That only lasts for a time. And then that, now you're really in trouble because now it takes more. It takes more. I want more of God. Isn't there a song we sing? More of you, God. I want more love. What if we started wanting more of Him? What would happen? And so he goes down here in verse 43 and he says, to, to, He's talking, finally he, he goes and he's talking to these Navajos. And to him, because the Bible is God speaking to me, so we put him in here. We're in, we're in Acts chapter 10, verse 43. To him all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. Did you catch that? When you believe in him, your sins are forgiven. What do you say? He's faithful and just to forgive us of all our unrighteousness. It's time to confess. What do you confess? I just blew it, Lord. I'm sorry. Oh, I just blew it, Lord. I know I'm saved anyway. Who cares? You weren't forgiven. Mm -hmm. it, it has to be with the heart. Now watch this. Now here's, can you imagine this Jewish man, you know, he's in a place where they're not circumcised and he knows they're all going to hell. <laughs> and so he's preaching, you know, because God made him come. He didn't want to come. He's going to get chewed out after for going to the Gentiles. They forgot what Jesus said in 1.8. In the Acts 1.8, what did he say? You shall receive power 
That word is dunamis, dynamite. Come on, some of you need some dynamite tonight to get your prayers answered. You shall receive power when? After, not before, after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witness. That's the word for martyr. That's what I get. That would, it teaches us how to die to self. And you shall be my witness where? First of all, in Jerusalem. What's Jerusalem? The church. You, when you get a miracle, you get something that... You need to tell the pastor, you know, pastor, I got, a, I got this... The, we were praying about this. And God answered my prayer. We need to tell the church what's really happening. I hear people, well, no, but God never moves in my church. Well, you know why? You're not moving. <laughs> Don't be a dummy. The only reason why God doesn't move in your church is because you're sitting there doing nothing. You know, Marjorie, how many, 47 years I've been looking for the ministry of pure warming. I cannot find it. In 1 Peter 4.10 it says, each one has a gift. Each one has a gift. Minister it to one another. The gifts are for the body of Christ. The gifts are here for us. Amen. So while Peter was still speaking these words, can you imagine him getting interrupted? I would just love to be there and see that. He says, well, I've had dogs barking and having a butt dog fight. I've had babies crying, people nursing. Nothing bothers me when I'm preaching. The lights go out. I just take out my flashlight and keep running I'm preaching. Yeah, I, don't, I don't let Satan bother me, especially in church. I can, turn, I can turn you off right now and you're not even here. That takes training. I learned that in martial arts. I turned around. That was all soulish. But you can do that for yourself in the kingdom. Man, I can just turn off everything right now. Music, anything. I can actually not even see you. Just think of His glory. While Peter was still there, I just looked through you. Amen. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell where? Come on, where did it fall? And you shall receive power when? After the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word? Who did it fall on? Oh, heard. Those that heard. You have to have an ear. I'm knocking at the door. If anyone hear my voice, listen to what it says, I will come in. He doesn't say upon. He says, when you got born again, you asked Jesus to come in, he came in. Amen. And he closed the door. <laughs> he shut the door. Remember Noah's Ark? Isn't it amazing Noah's Ark had to put this black pitch all over the ark so it wouldn't leak? Who do you think closed the door and pitched the outside? That's what God does. That's an example. Noah is an example of the end times. We're going to be safe in the ark. Where's the ark now? You know why they can't find it? Because we're the ark. Why do you need an ark to look at? Okay, there's a fireplace over there. We have an ark. And how many of you ever saw that? Who was the, the movie that they opened up the ark and, it, they, fall, and they, they all turned it weird and everything else? That movie? Uh, something of the ark. Lost ark. Raiders of the, Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> you know, we would just make an image of it and bow that down. They, they made an image of the snake that healed them. We can't make images. We can't idol people. You don't want to be like any other human. They're sheep. Come on. They go to the slaughter and they don't even cry. We need to be like Christ. And so here he is. He says, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. And those of the circumcised, in other words, the other Jews, who believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on, notice it says on, the Gentiles. On who? All those that heard the word. The word is Jesus Christ. For they heard them speak with tongues and what? Magnified God. How can that be of the devil if they're magnifying God? Does that make sense? Okay, now Peter has to go back to the big boys, back to Jerusalem. And he goes back there, look at chapter 11, verse 12. 
Then the Spirit told me to go with them. Now go down to verse 14. Uh, excuse me, 15. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as, as upon us at the beginning. Isn't that amazing? Keep reading. Then I remembered the word of the Lord that He said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And Matthew and Luke says, go, continues with baptized also in the Holy Spirit. And fire. What's the fire? The purifying. Now watch this. If therefore God gave them what? What is that? The same gift. Isn't that amazing? And, and come on. Whatever the apostles had, we have. Well, they were the, you're a pastor. That's why you can say this. These signs will follow them that believe. Notice it doesn't say you have to be an apostle. doesn't say you have to be a prophet. doesn't say you, you have to be an evangelist. doesn't say you have to be a pastor or a teacher. It says these signs will follow, follow or accompany those who believe. In my name, they're going to cast out demons. In my name, they're going to speak with a language they don't even understand, but it's going to build them up. They're going to handle serpents, and they, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They're going to lay hands on the sick, and they're going to recover. That's in the last part of Mark 16. You should read that. That was the first thing I started preaching on when I was 30 years old. I saw countless of healings and miracles, people falling out of the power. In those days, we didn't know we were supposed to catch them. But they were never hurt. Now, if you don't catch them, you get sued. Churches have closed because one person, you know, if one person comes to the altar, they all come to the altar. You know, I've chewed out the, the Mexican men before. I say, why do you always let the women beat you to the altar? Do I ever say something like that? Being, I'm terrible. But I get them upset enough to get to the altar. And one day there was a man, a young boy about that age, first one came to the altar. I said, oh my God, Mexico has a man. <laughs> Why do we let the women get all the blessings and we sit back like men? Men don't cry. Well, then you're a fool. All the prophets cried. Jesus cried. I cry. I wish I could cry more. Do you know what the second word for deliverance is? Cry. The women, you can get healed so much faster than us because we're proud. But your problem is you're a manipulator. And both of them are sin. She talked right at him, right into eating that food, just like that. You guys, we gotta be, you're dangerous. <laughs> Boy, you, it's just like when my wife will say to me, we're at a wedding, I do a wedding. Boy, you, you really did a good job. <laughs> Every button's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Tom says, Al, you did a good job. Thank you. Am I lying, Betty? Isn't that right when Mark says something about you? <laughs> you guys act like you've never heard any of this stuff before. Hey, he, he, he knows what I'm like, so blame him for having me. <laughs> and he goes on and he says, Therefore, God gave them the same gift, the same gift, as he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, who, who was I that I could withstand God. Now watch what happens in the next verse. And this is what we've got to have, especially pastors and ministers. If you don't understand the Holy Spirit, don't knock it. Mm -hmm. Quit knocking. We're on a, a camera right now, so people are going to see this around the world. So I'm not afraid to say it. But see, you don't talk, the only sin that will never be forgiven is blaspheming the Holy Spirit. I would be so afraid to knock the Holy Spirit. And pastors knock the Holy Spirit. They say, you know, that's of the devil. No, it isn't. You're saying Jesus is of the devil because he said you're going to speak in tongues. So why aren't you speaking in tongues? Because we got a bunch of wimps for pastors and they're not telling the truth. They want to make you happy. I do not want, want to make you happy. I want to make you set free. I, I'd rather see you healed than happy. Because if you get healed, you're going to be happy. You'll actually walk around with a smile on your face.
instead of frowning all the time. You know it takes more energy to frown than it does to smile? So all those wrinkles you got, look in the mirror and say, oh my God, I better start laughing. <laughs> How many of you know laughter is medicine? When was the last time you laughed? We should be laughing in church, right? right. Amen. Okay, so notice what happens now. There's, they, they're going to pay attention. And when they heard these things, they forgot about Acts 1-8 that they're going to, supposed to go in all the world. Isn't this amazing? We have to have tribulation. We have to be in trouble as Christians before we do anything. Do you know Christianity grows the fastest when it's under trial? When, it's, when we get persecuted, that's when we start ministering. In China, they're hiding under uh, houses and stuff. Uh, if you're uh, part of ISIS or Muslim, Muslim and you get saved, you can't tell anybody because they'll kill you. So they meet in secret places. We're so blessed we can declare God. Amen. Amen. You can't do this in some countries. You can't own a Bible. Even France at one time, year, hundreds of years ago, they were going to get rid of the Bible. You can't get rid of the Bible. It's a God thing. But where's the Bible in you? My God, it's so beautiful. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. My God shall supply all your needs. So why are you so needy? Look at how needy we are when we have everything we need. In Somalia right now, the people, our ministers are starving to death. They're missing meals. In South America, uh, in Venezuela, they're missing meals to feed their family. And we're complaining because we, we don't have enough in the refrigerator. When we quit complaining, I will praise the Lord at all times. His praises will continue to be in my mouth. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. And when they heard these things, they became silent. I want to silence some people today. Shut your bickering. Shut it up. Let this mouth there's so many places in the Bible, Bible about your mouth. And yet we've got Christians, dirty talk on the internet, disgusting talk, and, they, and they'll even say we're Christian. Well, come on, what is coming out of our mouth? Is it life or is it death? Look at chapter 15. Now they have an board meeting. This is when they found out that it was okay to minister grace. That's what Paul received from the Lord. You're saved by grace and not by works. And so, we're in Jerusalem now. All was sent by the church. We're in chapter 15, verse 8. So God, who knows the hearts, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit just as He did to us. And made no distinction between the Navajos and the Jews, purifying their hearts by faith. That's why I know there's fire on my head right now. I've had people tell me, you know what, I, I saw fire over you. Well, guess what, it's over you too. But it's the spirit, I, how many of you know at times you see things in the spirit? Amen? And so, how on earth do I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Well, I believe what Jesus says, and I, I want to show you that in Luke. Chapter 11. <clears throat> and, and he's talking about if you ask for bread, he's going to give you a stone. If you ask for an egg, will he offer you a scorpion? Verse 13, we're in 11, 13. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? That's it. It's that simple. How do you get saved? Forgive me, Lord, or I'm going to trust you. Come into my heart, Lord. 
And it bothers me that a lot of people think they said a simple little prayer and they're born again. Even Billy Graham, I heard him say once, well, his organization said about 1% of those that come to the altar actually got born again. It was a head knowledge experience. And if you haven't changed, I would really check your salvation. I'm changing all the time, and I've been at this for 47 years, and I'm still a mess. And I want to tell you what we're like, so you'll understand it. We're like an onion. And one, you, you peel one at a time. One problem at a time comes off you. Come on, have you ever noticed when you get through one trial, another one starts? <laughs> and it's never ending. We're going to be working on our this salvation. Remember, I am delivered. I'm being delivered. I will be delivered. It's a process. And so, what happens when you peel an onion? <clears throat> Tears. When was the last time you cried before the Lord? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember getting on his face, falling before the Lord. I used to get on my face and just cry. Ask the Lord to forgive me. What do we do now? I'm sorry, Lord. I'm too busy for you right now. <laughs> you know, we don't realize what we're doing, and we've got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit in us. But somehow, in chapter 2, we just saw 120 people get baptized the Holy Spirit. In chapter 10, we see all these people, all those that heard the word, got it? We know that Paul received it in Acts 8. Guess what? Philip goes to, to Philippi and they all got baptized. The whole town got saved by Philip. And guess what? The big boys up in Jerusalem find out that they got saved, but they didn't receive the Holy Spirit. Isn't that amazing? Philip baptized all of them underwater in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and none of them received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And here's one that was demon-possessed. He was a, a medicine man of the hour. And he saw when the boy, big boys came down, they laid hands on people and they started speaking in this strange lang language. He's now born again. He says, I want to buy that gift. So when I lay hands on people, you can't buy the gift. It's a freebie. You can't earn your born-again salvation. It's a freebie. Right. Come on. Yeah. All it takes with God, and this is what's so hard to accept, is faith. Yeah. Well, how do I get faith? You've got to believe the Bible. What does it say? Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. But that word hearing is the same Greek word for understanding. Now, remember the seed in the he throws the seed out. Some landed on rocky soil, some landed on, and only some landed on good soil. Well, what happened? When the sun came up, it burnt the seed, and the, everything died. And so, what happens a lot of times, and that was, it says, because they did not understand. How many times have we lost because we didn't understand? We didn't understand that God allows us to go through trials. <laughs> Do you ever notice when you say in the Lord's Prayer, when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, when I pass through the fire, when I pass through the fire, uh, the waters, I'll be there, you'll not be drowned. I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. Al, I know you're going in for surgery. You can rejoice, because I'm going to be there too. Did I suffer for it? You bet I suffer. Am I still suffering for it? Yes. But am I glorifying the Lord? You bet I am. I'm going to walk out. I'm going to not do it, only talk it. I'm going to walk it. See, a lot of people talk it, but they don't walk it. What you see here is what you get. <laughs> I'm not lying. <laughs> I'm an open book. Praise God. I love God's people. Amen. I think I proved that. Amen. And I could go on and on, so I'm, I'm going to just shut up now. Maybe. How many of you ever been on a plane? Uh, it's time to put your table, uh, your table, you know, the little table thing up, and uh, the, they'll be by pretty soon to pick up your garbage. Thirty minutes later, you're still waiting to land. That's what preachers do. <laughs> I don't want to do that because I'd like to pray for some of you if you'd like that. 
Amen. And tomorrow we have a minister's meeting, a workers' meeting in Chin Lee, the Pastor Joe's something Grace Community. I love it. It's got a grace in it. We believe by grace we're saved. We're God's Grace Church Incorporated. And, uh, praise God for that. And uh, hallelujah. Is the Lord stirring you tonight? Amen. Come on. Are, are you being stirred? See, even this message that I've been preaching for over 40 years excites me. If I had my way, I would preach this every day of my life. Because every place I go, they don't know anything about the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is our teacher, our guide. He said, I'm going to bring you, I'm going to give you somebody that's going to be standing by you and help you and lead you. And what, who's He going to lead you to? Jesus. The Holy Spirit's going to make you in love with Jesus. And if you're in love with Jesus, you're going to get in love with the Father. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one no one comes to the Father except through me. It's so simple. Why don't we come to the Father tonight through Jesus Christ? Lord, I just ask you to seal this word tonight, Lord. That especially those of you that are already baptized in the Holy Spirit. I pray the Holy Spirit stirs you up tonight. That you realize you're a fire. You're a minister of fire. That's what it says in... Uh, Hebrews chapter 1 where it talks about the angel spirit well the next one these ministers here of fire you look it up they're talking about humans when we walk into a room people should turn around and notice somebody came in because we got a fire on us yeah, yeah. amen <laughs> so father I just ask you to seal this word tonight in Jesus name Holy Spirit empower us tonight to do your will can I hear an amen? Amen. amen? amen. Well, if you want him to confirm the word, it's up to you. I can't do anything without him, and you can't either. But if two of us shall agree, guess what? You get it. So if you need prayer, come up to the altar. If you don't, we'll go home and